Um, right. One of the things that we do here at Beast of War as a community is we want to uh, support um, uh, small companies as well. Mm -hmm. So we have um, uh, we have a real commitment to try and our best as a community to support uh, to support the the smaller developers. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate um, uh, this past week that we actually got the team from Sally Forth in, yes, um, who have a, a game on Kickstarter at the moment, which is. It, 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 uh, it's hilarious. It, it, it's r raging mad bunnies of death in the future. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> uh, shall I try and explain this one? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, tell me all about Albedo. Or I'll, 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 yeah, Albedo. Yeah, it's Albedo, Albedo Combat Patrol. Albedo Combat Patrol. So it's an anthropomorphic combat game. So yes. you are going to be playing sort of humanized bunnies and hares on one side. With yep. big on pointy teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then on the other side you've got dogs, cats, foxes. I think there's like a living hundred... together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all getting into a bit of a war. It's based on an old comic book series, which is fully yeah. available online. But what I wanted to do this week was actually delve into the history of it a lot more to actually figure out what the hell's going on, what created this world. So, well, Justin got a chance to sit down with them. Yep, and here it is. Hi everybody, I'm back with Chris from Sally Forth, and it's time for one of those discussions that I absolutely adore to have with a games career. So, Chris, it's a question I love asking. What are your hopes and dreams for this game? If it, Wildest fantasy kind of stuff. How far would you love it to go? Well, I mean, we'd, we, we, we would love it to be a, a worldwide phenomena. Mm -hmm. There's sort of a game that's being played on tables there's sort of, there's sort of all, there's sort of all across the world. Mm. Um, we've got lots of ideas that the, there's just s so much background material that we can draw on mm -hmm. um, for a game. So one of our ideas is that we'd like to build what we call a dynamic gaming universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is really uh, using sort of technology and sort of internet to build a, camp a campaign system online where we can have gamers um, playing games and contr contributing to development of the storyline and the story arcs. Mm -hmm. So this is something that the sort of the development team have been talking about for the last uh, for the last few months. Mm -hmm. And you know, we would um, design uh, maybe a scenario, a scenario of the month, mm -hmm. and then gamers would but to sort of download download that, play the scenario, um, everybody across the world sort of feed their results mm -hmm. into a, a web based interface and that would determine the direction of the narrative campaign and mm. the sort of story that we're building for albedo uh go, no, sort of go, going forward mm. um we have a um you know, we would like to get this as a you know, a retail retail release with a sort of you know, box box set and supplements mm. that we can get into distribution chains and shops and sort of stores across the world mm -hmm. and to develop um, some ambassadors some sort of key players that are going to put on uh, they're going to put on games in stores and to introduce new players mm -hmm. to the you know to to the shared world of Steve's comics and you know, sort, of, you know, sort of imagination mm -hmm. now one one thing I would question ask about is now obviously I'm guessing you're a fan of the the series absolutely I love it yes <laughs> Uh, now, have you considered getting the, the original creator to do maybe a special issue? You know, once the game's up and running, if you're doing those campaigns, having a special issue that maybe comes out like once a year, just does a short run for people who want it. Right. Having something like that could just bring the world to life. That, that would be something I would dream of if I was doing something yeah, like this. Absolutely. And we have spoken to, to Steve about that. Mm -hmm. And there's sort of two, two, two aspects to it. So... Um, he's already agreed to do a completely new set of artwork to go into our oh, into yes. our ca campaign uh -huh. um, source book, and when we sort of talked about the dynamic universe mm. um, and gamers being involved across the world in the continuing storyline, mm. so that was in that now that was very much our idea that we would have maybe a year's worth of narrative mm. campaign that gamers results would actually feed in to drive the results. Mm -hmm. We would then get our writers to write it up and to pass it on to Steve oh. and to have you know, an end an end of year comic that, that, would be um, very cool. that takes takes a story forward. So 
yeah, that would be that would be absolutely awesome. Yeah. One thing I would do with that then is because you would be creating new characters, bringing new characters into it, that would be a perfect chance to give like those champions of the game a bit of a shout out or someone who's done really well at like a competitive tournament. You know, yes. Top yeah. player in the world. You're now in it as this character forever. Yeah, well, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, no, that it's, is a good it's, it's to sort of to yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like, to... the, there are some companies out there that will run a tournament, and the winner actually gets to work with the company to sculpt a new miniature. Yes, so yes. It's just getting your own little corner of the world for for being a champion of the game or yeah. doing really well at playing yeah. the game, showing yeah. your commitment to it. Definitely something to look at. Well, I really like that idea. And we've started do, doing that in, in a small way. So on our Facebook group, mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of uh, Mike Wilson, who's working on the source book, has uh, reached out to people who have played the original uh, Albedo role-playing game, which mm -hmm. has been, been around for a while, and asked them to send their character sheets Oh, in nice. so that their um, role playing character sheet characters that they've built up mm. and their worlds and their ships can get written into the ongo ongoing storyline. Nice and yeah, just taking it taking a step further. Yeah, um, uh, competition winners, um, ambassadors, uh, and that sort of thing. That mm. would that, that would be a fantastic way to mm. acknowledge them. Yeah. I, I like that, that. That, that, that. That's just my brain going off one. I have random good ideas sometimes. <laughs> you know, it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I appreciate that. That's that's fa that that is fantastic. Mm. So we've got um, yeah, we've got a, a a long way to go because mm. Steve's comic ran for twenty two years, and you can read all of them. He if you s search for Albedo Comics, mm. the the there is an archive um, on the web. And in fact, there are 163 different species. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are. I haven't listed them all. And I'm not sure if that sort of includes subspecies or mm -hmm. not, because we've had people writing into us and saying, can you do a head that's like my Border Collie or like my Labrador or Retriever? So I'm not sure whether dog is just one or it's mm -hmm. broken down. But no, the, 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 the potential for this no, is, no, is absolutely huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, like, it's it's a really deep world that you can explore because because it's so vast. I mean, like you could have something like a little offshoot. Someone can actually get their own story writing on the go. Because one thing I love about some games is I can create my guys. This is my planet, my world. Yes. You know, I want the independent Squirrel Republic. <laughs> and who are they going to align with? Um, you know, it might turn out a little bit like the Japanese during World War Two, going with the. Yeah, lines. yeah, absolutely. So we have sort of spoken about sort of two factions, but mm. there are, um, I think, as we alluded to earlier, so mm. some planets were settled by um, you know, sort of confederations and businesses mm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. That there are um, that there are space pirates. Um, no, because it's a yeah, yeah. No, yeah it's a, it's there are um, there are rogue operators. Mm. There are commercial interests that have. Um, that sort of build up you know, sort of mini security forces to yeah, defend yeah. themselves. And we have sort of three major intergalactic wars to cover to mm. bring us to the sort of the, the, the start of the uh, no, of, of the comic strip. So there's a lot of material to go with. Mm. And and it's nice for people to have that, that backlog that they can chew through while they're waiting for all the goodies to arrive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so we've made some of the goodies available up mm. front. Um, so you can start gaming in, in Albedo sort of straight, straight, straight away. Mm. Now, we said that we've got a lot of different planets. So some of them are hostile, some of them are desert, some of them will be ice world. So we've got that ge geographical diversity. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other thing that the design team have mentioned to me is uh, that, that um, the ACP 164 rules are good from individual squads mm -hmm. up to maybe a, a company level of maybe mm -hmm. 80, 80, 100 miniatures a game. Mm -hmm. um, it would be good maybe to do smaller scale figures and larger battles. So oh, now wow. we maybe have you know, 10 mil or 15 mil figures mounted on bases and to do you know, large battalion mm -hmm. battle group Type, type of games that 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 could be interesting to see to see how those those different militaries would actually work against each other at that scale yeah it's, it's something again i discovered it recently 
whenever you're going up what we what one of our guys our historical letter calls the levels of wargaming yes is so you start off at your skirmish level you'll then go up to your squad level you'll then go up to like the 15 mil level yes play the game against him where it was actually hacks and counter base right right and right you suddenly become detached from the unit itself yes that you get such an incredible tactical feel for the forces that you're playing yes really cool yeah to see. absolutely well now i love doing the big sort of multi-core napoleonic games with a big block of uh, no, miniatures mm. and it would be great to be to do a similar you know, let's model the whole you know, the whole invasion the you know, sort of across mm. mul you know, sort of mul multiple land masses mm. and it's um you know, the war isn't just fought on the surface that there are lots of fleet actions Oof. between um there's a fleet there's a fleets of starships with mm. their own um they're running combat air patrols mm -hmm. and drones and ai defenses and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so you no know, we could see a a, a starship combat game together Maybe. with a you no know, a, a large scale mm -hmm. uh, large large scale surface action mm -hmm. Well, there again, same guy. Uh, our historical editor actually has a, a project on the site called Dark Star, right? Which is essentially space combat, but it's it's got the freedom where you could actually build it into this world, and it's a really great rule system. If right. you get a minute when we're done here, I'll show it yeah. to you. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, no, that just sounds fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got to play a game against him recently, and the way he has it designed, it's a little bit old school. So you actually have sheets where you've got all the damage grids of your ships. Right. Whenever you're shooting each other, it feels like you're blowing chunks out of each right, other. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is something now that we, that that uh, that we would that we would like to see. I think mm -hmm. we sort of talked about sort of um, aerodyne fleets, mm -hmm. which go from the um, orbital mm -hmm. fleet to take sort of troops and units down onto the ground. Mm -hmm. So obviously that has a, the potential on a larger scale to um, do a whole invasion fleet land in flying combat air patrols um securing perimeters and so big 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 scale operations very cool so yeah i say the world is our oyster but it's really you know the whole galaxy so yeah it's uh, <laughs> galactic domination galactic domination indeed <laughs> so um yeah albedo we've got a no we've got a lot that we can do with 28 mill, mill, millimeter and mm. from skirmish to comp company level mm -hmm. we've got a, a wide range of species races whatever that we could do we've got different scales and then the thing that's uh funny is there's all sorts of offshoots that um that, that have come up that when we started doing the project it was very much we wanted to produce the world's first um anthropomorphic sci-fi miniatures game yep. but then people have have written into us when they've seen the figures and they've asked for conversion kits mm -hmm. and they want well, to sort of take all this it. stuff um into their you no know, sort of in into their existing worlds yeah well you you've given me some images and i want to cycle through to a specific yeah. one so if i bring this up for everybody so we've seen the comic books they're fabulous but then we come to this <laughs> yeah now we Who call... <laughs> in the hell did this what was the emperor drinking that night you know i mean i, mean, like, I can imagine him on some good wine turning to to whoever's with him going lads i've got a brilliant idea this is going to be amazing no 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 you've been indoctrinated no this, <laughs> no, this is the emperor's greatest secret you take the helmet off and they're all like this <laughs> yeah so this was um no a no a customer saw some early pictures and he said mm. I would just love. I think he um, is a customer called Bob, mm. and he wanted to put a, a a Space Marine chapter together called Spring Watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is oh, a, the green grass armor. Is, I didn't realize. <laughs> so this is a Spring Watch Space Marine uh, in all in all his glory, and he's uh -huh. put together. You know, uh, well, he's working on a whole company of, uh, of, of 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 these guys. Wow! Awesome. So yeah. And so, then you've also done other ones where it's converting for fantasy in World War Two as well. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. We're just really sort of showing um, what you can do, you know, sort of based on what, what what people have asked us. So, mm -hmm. some of the um, yeah, so, so, some of the some of the some of the games that people are doing, uh, sort of Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. has a race of cat folk folk. Mm -hmm. and a separate race called tabaxi mm -hmm. so we've had uh people from sort of D, &D groups saying oh, can you make these available mm -hmm. 
Um, the Traveller. I don't know. Do you remember Traveller? Uh, before Get... my time, probably. Oh, uh, right. Uh, okay. Battle. Well, no, no, no I, I think it's had some more modern versions. But okay. Yeah, Traveller had a race called Aslan, which mm-hmm. were uh, cat-based humanoids. So we've had people asking, asking about that. Gamma World. Uh, not played that one. Gamma World. So this came from the makers of D&D, and mm-hmm. it's a post-apocalyptic... Uh, which Ooh. I thought was one of your favourites. I, I do love my post-apocalypse, but yeah. I, I, I haven't really looked much at anthropomorphic games yeah. just yet, but this, yeah. is, this is making me want to look a little closer. Yes, well, this was, um, I think it was just one of the many mutations uh, mm. caused uh, caused by the blast. So they have yeah. a race called Hoops, which mm. are giant mutant bunnies. Ah. <laughs> now, this these are um, a Games Workshop uh imperial guard miniatures which i yeah. guess every you know, we've all probably painted some at some point in our gaming career yeah and they've been converted to be felonids okay so felonid, felonids um are in the official games workshop background to mm-hmm. you know, my understanding and they're a race of um of mutant aberrations so okay. some gamers say sort of burn them it's heresy but you know, the emperor has um welcomed them in, you know, into his army, but I'm they, odds that's a penal legion. A penal legion, possibly, <laughs> but it's just it's a bit different, isn't it? Mm. So, yeah. Well, you you have fun with gaming the way you want to, and having the option to actually just grab different animal heads to actually swap in and actually put into like different characters from role playing games and stuff, or into full forces. Yeah, why not? If if it's what you want to do, if it's what your fun is, go for it. Yeah, well, I say it wasn't something that we that we planned right at the mm. start. It was very much sort of a, you know, a new sci-fi genre. Mm. But people have just said, well, it would be great to have a furry Frostgrave warband oh. or you know, bur- 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 burrows and badgers or you know, mm. any, you know, any, any of these things. And really, if we produce 163 different species for sci-fi mm. and we make them available as conversion kits, yeah. Um, it's just so easy to do, and I can see a wide diversity of, uh, of new species coming onto the tabletop. Well, there, there's a question for you before we wrap up. What's the one species you want to see on the tabletop, or have you already made it? Mm. Well, um, you're a cat or a dog person. Who you like to keep budgies. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't know. I like the, uh, I like the dodge. Well, well I think that uh, sort of badgers are quite, uh, are quite appealing. So I see an EDF badger platoon. British or American? Uh, the British badger looks as if he's going to invite you in for tea, whereas the American yeah. one looks like he's about to steal your wallet. Um, I think it's going to be the British one. It's going to be no. They're they're they're, they're kind right. of sort of the good guys at the mm. you know, at the end of the day. I don't know if you've picked it up that uh, no, I, I am actually an EDF supporter. But, uh, <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> we have guys on the team that are very much sort of batting for no batting for the expansionist yeah, um, yeah. ILR. But uh, yeah, no, I, I like the EDF. That's uh, oh. who I'm collecting in gaming. Very cool. All right. Well, everybody, I tell you what, the only question left to ask is which species would you love to see for this game? Are you hoping to see some squirrels? Do you want an army of humanoid chickens? Would you like perhaps <laughs> to see something more nautical? Would you like to see some amphibians in there? Some, some frog people, some turtle people, so, things like that. Get those comments in below. We'll move on. We'll see you again another time. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Colin from Battle Systems and you're watching The Weekender at beastsofwar.com. Okay, so this is very strange for me, seeing a socialist society which has one species splitting off and deciding we're more important, it's time for war. Yeah. <laughs> and going, oh, by the way, we're, we're rabbits and hares, so we breed like crazy, so we need more space than everybody else. Yes. <laughs> which is why there is war in a world that there has never been war well, before. Well, if you're interested, uh, definitely go and, go and yeah. check it out. And uh, once again, you know, uh, a sincere thanks to everyone in yeah. the community for our continued support of uh, small companies. Like, it is something that we do our best on, mm-hmm. and uh, as and when we get the, the <laughs> opportunity, we try, to, we, we try to bring you a little bit more behind the scenes of what, yeah. the, what the, the smaller startups are working on so um thank you for anyone who, yeah. who, who goes out of their way to try and support the smaller startups that's where a lot of the innovation in the industry comes from mm. and it's good to it's good to help them out when we yeah. can and I, I do have a recommendation for everybody mm-hmm. if you have a look on the actual the kickstarter that they're running yeah they're also doing a terrain range to match yeah, in with the this. terrain oh. is and great it is gorgeous so if we have a quick scroll down through here i'll show you so this is some of the old comic book stuff yep. mm-hmm. this is some of the 3d renders yep uh, but if I can get down to it, oh, where is it? No, that's not it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, very nice. Look at this. They're yeah. using a mixture of resin, laser cut HDF, 
and laser cut perspex yeah, yeah. to actually give you glass building blocks. So mm -hmm. like modern day style buildings with lots of clear spaces that you can see through and see into. Yeah. Like I actually got to play a game of this and one of my favorite things was I was looking down on the table and they had a big like perspex panel on the roof. I could see right down in and see the miniatures inside the building. It's so simple and so silly, but it made me happy. <laughs> the one it's a terrain system that would work even for modern yeah. and some oh, stuff. Yeah. They, oh, they yeah. had uh, one set up for one of the lights place, which was a underground subway system, mm -hmm. a yeah. um, oh, cool. subway uh, station. I just really loved how that looked on the mm -hmm. table. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like there you can see on the side, they've also got some mirrored panels in here, like solar panels. Yeah. And it just, it's a gorgeous terrain system. I'm really excited to see just what you could build with that. Yeah. By all means, go and check it out. Um, it's on Kickstarter. It's got a little while to go yet.